Here's a question for all of the devs out there, experienced and unexperienced alike. Given three examples of code that does the same thing, written by three different devs, can you categorize them or spot the difference between junior, mid, and senior code? I know, I know, you need more context. So let's get into that. The devs were tasked with building out an API that will have multiple endpoints. These endpoints will potentially need to publish the processed results of their incoming requests to be consumed by some downstream service. We'll focus our attention on just one endpoint for now, which is the hello endpoint. All three of these examples are implementations of the hello handler, which is the code that is executed when requests are received on this particular endpoint. Let's start with this example. So after declaring the vars for the process data and the response, a helper function is called called process hello which takes in the request data to be processed. Note the use of an interface for the request type in this function's params. The implementation details of process hello don't really matter here, just imagine that the data processing can either fail or succeed. If it fails, we'll return an error. If it succeeds, we'll return the result of processing the data. Now, our handler uses an if-else structure that checks to see if the data was successfully processed or not and this will determine the response to the client as well as if we need to publish the result to be handled downstream. Finally, we write the response to the client regardless of if the data was processed successfully or not. Now, as mentioned before, as endpoints get added to this API, they're all expected to publish the process results downstream if successful. which means that we'll essentially need to have the same boilerplate to determine if we'll publish for every endpoint in this case. Just something that you'll want to keep in mind when comparing the three coding examples. Moving on to the next example. Now, this language has first class functions, so a function can be treated like any other variable. So for the processing logic, this time we have a variable here called process hello, and its value is a function that takes in the client request and returns the processed result and the response for the client. The processing logic, again, doesn't really matter here. What's important is, if the processing fails, the process data will be nil, and the response data will also be nil with a message informing the client that the processing failed. If the data is successfully processed, both the processed result and the response data will be present with a message informing the client of success. Now keep in mind that this function is not invoked here, it is just defined as a variable. And in this example there's another function called process and publish, which takes the process hello function in as a parameter or argument. Now process and publish uses generics for the types associated with the request and the response so that it can be used for all of the endpoints of this API. Because remember, every API will need to publish the result if successful, but every API will not have the same request and response type. So process and publish will call the passed in processor function on the request of whatever type. And that function will return the response of whatever type and the process data. Then it's simply a matter of checking if processing was successful, and if so, publish the result. Now going back to our hello handler, as we now know we need the hello request as well. Then process and publish returns the response of whatever type. And finally, we write that response to the client. Now, as you can see, this example extracts the publishing boilerplate to a generic function that can be used for every endpoint. For example, the code for the goodbye handler can follow the same pattern. With that in mind, let's move on to the last example. We're presented with some pretty straightforward code. We simply declare the processed result and the response variables, map the request body to our internal request structure, create a success flag that defaults to true, then we'll do our processing logic, but if it fails, we'll set the success flag to false. 
Depending on whether processing was successful or not, the process ID for the processed result will either be nil or exist. And that's going to determine if we publish. And finally, we just write the response to the client. So what do you say? How would you categorize the given examples? I look forward to reading your opinions in the comment section below.